Good afternoon. Uh, today is Thursday, September 1st, 2022. The time is 1.30 p.m. I'm pleased to call to order the uh, regularly scheduled uh, September uh, meeting for the City of West Palm Beach Zoning Board of Appeals. It's a beautiful day here in Paradise and look forward to the proceedings today. Uh, we'll first go ahead and start off with a uh, uh, roll call, please. Christopher Hagan. Here. Christopher Kammerer. Cam Here. Uh, Michael Hyman. Please let the record show Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood. Here. Alfred Fields. Here. Jonathan Burgess. Here. Okay, thank you. We do have a quorum present. Uh, please, everyone, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please be seated. Uh, we did receive in our packet the uh, minutes from the June 2nd meeting. Uh, hopefully everyone has had a chance to review the minutes. Uh, at this time, if there are any additions or corrections to the minutes, I'd like to, uh, to hear those so those can be made. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, the motion is made by Board Member Wood and seconded by uh, Vice Chair Kammerer. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, now we'll move into a report from our Planning Division staff. Uh, Mr. Roach? Good afternoon, John Roach, Principal Planner for the City. Don't have anything to report other than um, you should have received at the a couple days ago, an email with regards to the revised agenda that at the end of the agenda, the nomination of, or yes, the nomination and election of officers um, is added under other business. So as our regularly September meeting, uh, the bylaws call for that to happen. So uh, just before we leave here today, we'll need to uh, go through that process. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. I'll now do move to remarks from the chairperson. Uh, I'll just go over the uh, proceedings today and the form in which they're uh, that that will follow in in terms of the proceedings uh, matters before the ZBA are quasi judicial in nature anyone wishing to speak including members of the public who wish to offer public comment will need to be sworn in the applicant will make a presentation to answer any questions from the board then the applicant will be followed by city staff who will provide a presentation and recommendation to the board then answer any questions then members of the public will be given the opportunity to, to provide comment with each person receiving up to three minutes. City staff will also insert any public comment received in advance of today's meeting, such as emails, voicemails, et cetera, into the record. Then the applicant will have a chance for rebuttal. Uh, the floor will then be closed and the board will go into executive session for a discussion, a motion, and then a vote. Uh, at this board, uh, four affirmative votes are needed for approval. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go on to uh, to the next item on the agenda, which is a declaration of ex parte communication. I'll remind the board members, um, a couple meetings ago, we started off um, with the uh, procedure that's in the laminated card in front of you. So um, please go through the, the steps in that in, in making your disclosure. I'll start on my left with uh, board member Burgess uh, and do want to note uh, for the record also that, that uh, uh, board member Burgess will be because there are five of us here today, instead of being alternate, we'll be uh, uh, participating in and, and voting in all the, the matters before us today. Okay. For all of the items on today's agenda, I have not had ex parte communications. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinions. I will be recusing myself from the fourth agenda item, which I'll make at that time and step out of the chambers at that point. Great, thank you. Okay, board member Wood. I have not had uh, ex parte communications. I have not had any written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit and I have not received expert opinions. And then just please read the last sentence uh, oh, by request. Yeah. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. Vice Chair Kammerer. Sure. Uh, as to each of the 
cases before us today. I, I have not had ex parte communications. I have not received any written communications. I have not conducted any investigations. I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinions. And that I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. And Board Member Fields? As to the matter of the items on the agenda dated September 1st, 2022, I, Alfred Fields, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communication, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a VIT site visit, have not, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communication be made part of the record. Thank you. And uh, as far as uh, <clears throat> my ex parte communications go, as to all the cases on today's agenda, I have not had ex parte communications. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made any site visits. I have not received any expert opinions. And I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Uh, with that, uh, we'll move into the public hearing and we'll start off with the swearing in of the speakers. If you wish, wish to speak on any of, the, uh, any of the cases on today's agenda, please rise and be sworn in. Please lift your right hand. Do you somebody swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Um, we have no continued cases, so we'll move into um, item <clears throat> C1, uh, uh, well, item 6, C1, uh, which is Zoning Board of Appeals case number 3414. I'll ask our board secretary to please call, please read that uh, item into the record. A request by Dennis Almendarez of the Ohana Pet Resort for Class B Special Use Permit with a waiver from Section 94-273B-81B2 of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations to allow an animal daycare and boarding facility with an outdoor play area in the Office Commercial Zoning District. The location, the subject property consisting of 0 0.84 uh, acres is located at 2617 North Australian Avenue within Commission District Number 1, Kathleen Ward. Thank you. I'll now turn it over to the applicant to make a presentation. Please introduce yourself uh, for the record. Okay. Thank you. Forgive me because I speak much easier with the dogs. Uh, Dennis Almendaris, one of the owners of the Ohana Pet Resort, Furs and Feathers Resort, doing business as the Ohana Pet Resort. And what you see on the screen there is our existing building, which we have uh, been at for the past uh, six years, a wonderful six years. Well, five wonderful years we had one 2020 was pretty rough but um it's what's happened around our area of course is rezoning and we've had to relocate to another location we did find a building there in australian that is close to the city we service so many residents here at the city um, and we found this location and we are now here before y'all asking for a permit to allow for overnight boarding. Overnight boarding is an essential part of an urban development area since so many people do travel, do go out. Um, all of the condos uh, love it because it keeps the noise and stuff from people having their dogs there overnight when the owners aren't there. They, they would prefer them staying with us. So we have an upscale type facility. That's why we call it a resort. It does not have outdoor areas for dogs to stay out doors so we're mainly an indoor area however pets do need to go out to the bathroom and so we do have to have an outdoor area for them to go to the bathroom and that's what we have that outdoor area for and we're here now just asking for us to continue our business here in the city and uh, move to this location we will only have one location eventually we will move out from where we're at over to this building here um i i I don't know what else. To, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's fine. I think um, I know staff will also go over, um, you know, some of the specific, like the technical parts of the uh, the request that we'll be uh, deciding on today. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. We we like I said, we've been operating for six years. All of the same procedures, uh, animal care and control has always comes by a couple of times a year and checks us out. We always have a very good report card record with them. 
Uh, we do maintain the same standards. We do have our trash pickup for four days a week and double bag everything and keep that going. So we're gonna maintain a top quality place for the city so the city's happy. We have over 580 uh, five-star reviews on us. So we're, we're trying to keep up that standard. Thank okay, you so thank you. much. And if you'll s stay there, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, open it up to the board for any questions. I'll uh, start again with uh, board member Burgess. Any questions of the applicant? Uh, at your current facility, <clears throat> do you have outdoor play area or outdoor? Um, it, it's not an outdoor play area. It's an outdoor area so they can go out, do their business. Um, some dogs, they may need to exercise for a little bit, come in if they're not in a play group. But we have three indoor play group areas, and that's where they mostly get their exercising and stuff like that. Um, but we do need to have the outdoor area because that's what's common for them to be able to go outside and use the restroom and come back. So I couldn't tell from the site plan whether that outdoor area proposed on the new site is uh, intended to be a fenced-in enclosure? Yes, sir, it is. It is completely fenced in. All of our area will be completely fenced in. It is with a um, board-on-board -board fence, so it's completely private. Great. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, board Member Wood, any questions of the applicant? Uh, no questions. Okay. Vice Chair Kammerer? No questions. Okay. And board Member Fields? Uh, just one question. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, recommendations that the staff are making uh, on this uh, particular request? Yes, sir, we are. It's the same recommendations six years ago when we opened up our first facility. Um, they are exactly the same. We intend to maintain our good standings and continue exactly the same way. Thank you. Thanks. And so, yeah, to follow up on that, one of them was that no more than two dogs at a time would be permitted in the outdoor grass area, and you're, you're fine with that. Mm -hmm. I, I was curious um, just uh, to understand, you know, sort of the, um, in this scheme of things with this, with this request, uh, what the typical pet census or maximum pet census would be inside the building at, you know, kind of at peak occupancy. Um, during daycare, they'll probably average between 50 to 60 dogs between the three daycare groups. Uh, boarding averages between 35 to 55, depending on the day and stuff like that. Okay, and it so it will be adequate to just have two out, outdoors at a time with that? Yeah, we have a staff member that that's what they do all day is just take the dogs out. And we have a policy it is a written policy we have that no dog can be out for more than five minutes at a time. Uh, we do that for safety reasons. We have a lot of uh, pugs, bulldogs, things, short-nosed dogs that are very susceptible to heat. We are in Florida. We have probably five days of winter. So um, we keep that policy in, in place just to be on the safe side for the animals. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions at this time. So thank you. yeah, thank you for your presentation. And we'll now, um, you can have a seat and we'll have staff thank come you. up and make a presentation then. Thank you, good afternoon for the record, John Roach, Principal Planner. Um, as indicated by the applicant, this is a request for a special use permit. Um, it is for the property located at 2617 North Australian Avenue. So that's at the western terminus of 25th Street and Australian. You can see here it labeled in yellow. This is uh, an exit or a previous uh, office building um, that has remained vacant for a short period of time. Um, and that is what the applicant is proposing to convert into the daycare boarding facility. You can see some of the adjacent uses uh, to the south is the Lakeside Health Center, which is a skilled nursing rehab facility the American Lung Association to the north, as well as some multi-tenant office and then an additional animal hospital. And then across the street, you have a, a mix of uses uh, ranging from office, a gas station, convenience store, which actually has come before the, before, come before the board previously, uh, as well as a church and multi-tenant office and commercial building. So you can see it sits within a, a commercial district there on Australian Avenue. It's actually zoned office commercial. The OC zoning district does allow uh, veterinarian clinics and hospitals, as well as animal shelters that are enclosed. However, it is a use that is permitted subject to three additional standards that you can see on the screen there. Um, one of those additional standards is that animal boarding, except to provide treatment, is prohibited. Uh, so overnight stays, unless it was part of a vet 
uh, facility and that animal had received treatment, uh, overnight boarding is prohibited. So the applicant is requesting to waive that provision or that additional standard, and by doing so, that triggers the special use permit and, uh, and therefore comes before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the other additional standards, they are fully complying with. The, the other zoning matters they are complying with in terms of parking and, and things like that, it's all an existing building. There will be interior renovations with the exception of the enclosure of the outdoor area. So here is the site plan, just a little orientation. North is now to the left side of the screen. Again, it's the existing one-story building with the, uh, the lawn area in front, parking behind. They're not proposing to make any modifications to that site, uh, simply an interior renovation with the exception of uh, enclosing this grass area on the south side of the building. And if you go back to the, uh, the location map, that outdoor area is here on the south side of the property. So it's adjacent to the parking lot for the uh, skilled nursing, or one of the parking lots for the skilled nursing. There's a substantial distance between that area and any adjacent building. So uh, we feel like that the impact with regards to that outdoor area in combination with the conditions uh, would be minimal. Um, with regards to the interior floor plan, again, it's all interior renovations. You have your boarding uh, at the south end of the building. You have your daycare to the north end of the building. And this would be the new door into the outdoor play area. It's staff's opinion that the application complies with all the applicable standards outlined on the screen there. Um, so we are recommending approval, but subject to the co two conditions that were listed within the staff report and are on the screen here. Uh, one is with regards to waste removal, and then the second is with regards to the maximum number of dogs that can go into that outdoor play area. That's just from a noise factor and so forth and making sure that we're mitigating and keeping the, the uh, increase in impact on adjacent properties to a minimum. So again, staff's recommending approval subject to those con conditions and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roach. Um, I'll start off with board member Wood. Any questions of staff? No questions. Okay, Vice Chair Cameron? No questions. Okay, board member Fields? No question. And board member Burgess? Yes, uh, regarding the enclosure material, was there discussion about whether that's gonna be an opaque um, fence, how high, is it chain link fence, what, um, what's being proposed for the structure? And, and I'm asking from an acoustic standpoint if an opaque surface up against the adjacent property line would be uh, more sensitive to any uh, noise concerns or anything like that. I'm not familiar with anything that was specified within the, the application and it hasn't been incorporated into the, the conditions here. Um, it's my understanding based upon the testimony, you know, from the applicant that they are proposing a wood board and board fence. Um, that could certainly be added as a condition if that's the, the you know, the, the wishes of the board. Um, but it, again, based upon that, you know, a, sh a wood shadow box is my understanding what they're proposing. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have no questions of staff. Okay. And just one procedural matter, just a reminder with regards to special use permits, actually requires two motions. Um, you should see them in your packet. Um, first motion is with regards to waiver of the additional standard, whether or not you approve that waiver. And then the second would be the special use permit itself and any conditions that are associated with that. So uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is a public hearing, so I'll start off by uh, opening it to uh, any members of the public who wish to speak. Okay, if you do wish to speak on this matter, please come up to the, the podium. Okay, seeing none, I'll ask staff, were there any emails or voicemails or any other communication received to enter in the record? Okay, staff's indicating no. Uh, so I'll now close the public hearing. And at this point, um, We'll go into executive session here at the board. So I'll start off with uh, Vice Chair Cameron. Any discussion? No, no, no issues. Okay. Board Member Fields? No, no further discussion. Any further discussion, Board Member Burgess? No. Okay, Board Member Wood? No. Okay. Um, also, uh, no discussion on my end. So uh, at this point, I'll entertain a motion. And remember, uh, staff mentioned there were two two items or two motions to be made. Uh, so uh, first, I believe it's uh, on the waiver. Yes. I have a question about the, there's a waiver standards that are included here. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me? 
So the, the way the motion is drafted is there's a granting of the waivers, which is the first paragraph. <coughs> The second paragraph is denying the waivers, and the reason those standards are listed under there is that if you were denying, we ask that you specify based upon which standard and why. But if you are granting the waivers, it's simply the first paragraph. I'll make a motion that the Zoning Board of Appeals grant Zoning Board of Appeals case number 3414, a request by Dennis Hammerdeus on behalf of Ohana Pet Resort for a Class B special use permit to allow overnight boarding without needing to provide required treatment. This motion is based upon the testimony presented at the hearing along with the application submitted and staff report, which constitutes competent substantial evidence. The board hereby makes findings of fact that each of the applicant applicable criteria in section 94-36E3 and 4 and sections 94273D81B of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations have been met. In addition, the granting of this Class B special use permit is subject to the conditions of approval contained in the staff report dated September 1, 2022. I move that these conditions are necessary to ensure compliance with the with with the purpose and the intent of the zoning and land development regulations and consistent with the comprehensive plan of the city of West Palm Beach. And the two exceptions are facilities shall provide appropriate waste removal measures, fire and smoke detection systems, and always provide an attendant on site during operating hours. No more than two dogs shall be permitted at a time in the grass uh, area utilized as the outdoor play area. And before I ask for a second, um, the motion that was read was for the Class B special use permit. It doesn't matter which order uh, we take these in? Yes, sir, we should do the uh, waiver first. So I would ask that you just not take action on the, uh, on the motion that's made. Can we table that motion and just? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll, we'll table that motion. And then uh, the prior page and the packet is the, uh, is the motion for the waiver. Chair, um, there was no second to the motion. So actually, it wasn't completed. I'll oh. I'll Okay, yeah, I'll accept the second. Yeah, chair accepts it, the second, and uh, and then we'll we'll table the motion. Um, so I'll I'll entertain a motion on the uh, granting of the waiver. So I move that the zoning board of appeals grant the waiver for zoning of appeal zoning board of appeals case number three four one four as listed in the staff report dated September one two thousand twenty two. This motion is based upon the testimony presented and the hearing along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The board hereby makes finding of facts that all the applicable criteria in section 94273A2 of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations have been met. Okay, thank you. We have a uh, motion by Board Member Wood. Is there a second? Second. Second by Board Member Fields. Any further discussion? If not, I'll ask our Board Secretary to call the roll, please. Christopher Hagen? Yes. Christopher Kemmerer? Yes. Michael Hyman? Let the record show Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood? Yes. Uh, Alfred Fields? Yes. Jonathan Burgess? Yes. Okay, uh, so the waiver is approved five to zero. Uh, we had a, a motion uh, by Board Member Wood and a second by Board Member Fields on the granting of the uh, Class B special use permit. Um, any further discussion on that motion? If not, I'll ask the Board Secretary, Secretary to call the roll, please. Christopher Hagen? Yes. Christopher Kimmerer? Yes. Michael Hyman, please let the record show that Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood? Yes. Alfred Fields? Yes. Jonathan Burgess? Yes. Okay, the motion passes five to zero. Uh, congratulations and best of luck. Okay, uh, we'll now move on to uh, uh, item number two uh, under the Zoning Board of Appeal cases. I'll ask the board secretary to please call or please read this item into the record. A request by John Schmidt of Schmidt Nichols on behalf of 1890 Palm Beach Lake, Lakes OPCO LLC for a Class B special use permit to allow for a 4,414 square foot automated car wash within the general commercial zoning district. 
The subject property consisting of 1.16 acres is located at 1890 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard within Commission District Number 2, Shalonda Warren. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll have the applicant uh, please introduce yourself and make your presentation. Uh, good afternoon, City Board members. My name is Jordan Sperling, agent for the applicant. Today, I'll be presenting the proposed Minico car wash facility on Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. The 1.16 acre subject property is located at 1890 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard at that southeast quadrant of the intersection of Palm Beach Lakes and the I-95 thoroughfare. Uh, the site is currently undeveloped. Uh, as you may know, uh, the site last operated as a full service restaurant. Um, as you may know, as the Olive Garden in 2007, a demolition permit was issued in October of 2019 for the structure serving the former restaurant use and the site's been primarily vacant since that time. What we're proposing in front of you today is a one lane, um, approximately 4414 automated car wash facility. The proposed use falls under the motor vehicle fuel sales and service use category, which is a permitted use within the general commercial zoning classification with issuance of the class B special use permit. Uh, and below is a collage of some of the colors and architecture design of the mini eco car wash. Uh, Mini Eco Car Wash, just so you know, has other facilities in the nearby area, and they're expecting more throughout Palm Beach County in the near future. Uh, as previously mentioned, the subject property is located at the intersection of Palm Beach Lakes and I-95. Uh, site access is proposed via a west full access connection to the existing Slip Street and a south full access driveway connection to the South Service Road. Uh, as you can see in the image, customers can access the car wash from the existing slip street from the traffic light off of Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, making this a signalized intersection. Uh, just to give you an idea of the surrounding area, uh, to the north across Palm Beach Lakes is the Renaissance Charter School. To the south is a single family residential, which is further separated by a 60 foot canal waterway and a 20 foot public right of way. To the east across uh, I-95 is the Best Buy department store, and to the west is a two-story mixed-use office retail building. <clears throat> Just to put it into perspective, uh, the proposed use is set back approximately 200 feet from the uh, residential to the south, which includes that 60-foot waterway and 20-foot right-of-way. Uh, this is more of a close-up colored site plan graphic of the car wash, just to get into the site design. As you enter into the site from that slip street I just mentioned to the west, you'll enter into the queuing area, uh, which is uh, we're showing as a 12 car uh, double stack queue, as you can see in yellow, where you will wait for your car wash to get washed, and then each vehicle will enter into the wash um, in a hybrid type format. Once you exit the car wash, you have three options. Um, option one is to leave through the existing public alley, as you can see, uh, and make your way to uh, Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. Um, option two is to make a left for a detailed interior service and for your vehicle after it's washed. And option three is to make a right for free vacuum services for customers. Uh, we're providing 10 interior service parking spaces on the east side of the car wash and 14 free vacuum spaces on the west side and five employee parking spaces along the northern property line, as you can see in blue. The site's heavily vegetated on the perimeter and we'll have Calusia hedges around the outdoor courtyard just on the east side of the queuing area. Uh, below is the proposed architectural elevations for the car wash facility. Um, we have our architect here to answer any more detailed questions, but what, what we try to do is we try to take cues from the modern development along Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard corridor, adjusting it to more of a domestic character uh, through the use of materials, textures, and commercial elements. And we try to make it a contemporary style with varied facades in order to be generally compatible with the structures you see every day on, on Palm Beach Lakes. Uh, this slide just shows some of the project data. As I mentioned before, the use falls with under, under the motor vehicle fuel sales and service use category, which is permitted within the general commercial zoning district. Uh, the applicants required three parking spaces. We're providing five, as you can see at the bottom left of the screen. Uh, and we're providing 24 free vacuum interior spaces, as I mentioned. We have city staff's recommendation of approval. The proposed class B use special permit is in compliance with the city's general use, specific use, and additional use standards. Uh, and we're also in agreement with the six conditions located on page two of the city staff report. 
Uh, I had a prior conversation with the uh, project manager regarding condition 3A, uh, where we're proposing hours of operation to be 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. seven days per week. Uh, city staff has indicated they're in agreement with this modification and found that the proposed use will not adversely affect the surrounding property, property and it's compatible with the surrounding area. Uh, the, the site has been properly noticed within 500 feet. It was advertised in the Palm Beach Post and we have our client and development team here to answer any questions you may have and we respectfully request your support for approval. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll start off with any questions of uh, the board for the applicant. Uh, I'll start off with board member Fields, any questions? Um, just uh, one question on the time of operations. Can you uh, repeat that information once again uh, on the conditions? Uh, yes, um, as I mentioned before, um, we're proposing to have 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days per week for the uh, Minico car wash hours of operation. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll go to uh, board member uh, Burgess. Um, yes. Two questions. Uh, one was about the queuing area. Um, I was glad to see that you know some of the uh, concerns with uh, a car wash facility uh, in other locations in the city has to do with the queuing uh, stacking distance. So I, I see the, that there's 10 spaces allocated on the site plan and 12 labeled. I wanted to see where those two additional queuing spaces are located. And we have our traffic engineer to answer any more detailed questions, but we were thinking um, as you end up that uh, 10 space double stack, there's a potential for two additional ones as you enter into the conveyor belt before you enter in the- And then they merge together yep. and be one lane into the facility, okay. And the second is, um, you know, and it's more of a, it's gonna be a question for staff eventually as well, but the, um, for the applicant's benefit, um, if we were talking later about fuel sales and service being the use code of this facility and this, the fact that this is a car wash but not really a fuel sales or service facility, if there were a condition discussed about restricting fuel sales on this site as part of this conditional use approval, would, be, would the applicant be uh, in support of an additional con uh, condition about restriction of fuel, fuel sales and service? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn it over to uh, board member Wood. Any questions of the applicant? I do, um, I'm familiar with this site. It actually was an olive garden many years ago. And I know that they struggled um, probably the whole time they were there with ingress and egress. And um, mostly because Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard has the service roads. And in a lot of cases, they eliminated those service roads east of I-95, but they still exist west of I-95. So my question is that because of the unusual um, entrance there with 95 right there and you have to you have to go into this service road in advance knowing where you're going um, do you foresee that to be a problem with uh, a, you know any any kind of a retail operation there or how do you how do you uh, think that you won't uh, have the same issues that Olive Garden has? John Schmidt, agent for the applicant. Um, just to uh, understand your question, what Mint Eco typically finds is most of their uh, uh, subscription based as well. So primarily all their income uh, comes from uh, so the subscription base. That typically is a mile to two miles around this radius. So uh, you know, they have their location off of Southern, uh, Southern Boulevard. This is gonna aid to hopefully take some of the traffic off of that uh, with their kind of hybrid design that they have. So we think we're gonna do very well at the site and it's got great exposure. So we don't see an issue with it. Is there, as part of your approval process, is there any modification to the uh, service road that you're being required to make? Uh, we've been working with the neighbors on looking at to repave it. Um, uh, there's also some trees that have upheaved some of the neighboring property. So while we're out there, we've been in discussions with them uh, to uh, make some of those corrections out there. But uh, we feel with the, the additional stacking that we put on there that this site will work very well. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Kammerer? No questions. Okay, I have no questions to the applicant. So, 
at this point, uh, we'll have staff uh, come forward and make a presentation. Good afternoon, Zoning Board and those in attendance and audience. My name is Kevin DeFrank, planner with the Development Services Department and the case planner reviewing subject case 3409. As the applicant stated in his presentation, the request is for a Class B special use permit to allow for an over 4,000 square foot automated car wash facility at the subject property located at 1890 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard which is a little over an acre in size, currently zoned general commercial with the future land use designation of commercial. Now, to give you a better visual representation of the site, I provided the photos um, here that I've provided in the staff report. And as you can see, looking southwesterly from Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard and looking northwest easterly from the alley. In addition, I have videos of short clips that I took on my site visit. So essentially, it's a vacant property except for the existing parking lot area. And here is the latest revised site plan that uh, the applicant submitted. And I must say, the applicant's team has made consider considerable efforts in um, addressing staff's concerns with uh, the proposed development. And as you can see, this is how they are proposing to improve and develop the site. And staff finds the request complies with all the applicable standards according to the zoning and land development regulations. And staff recommends an approval of ZBA case number 3409 with the conditions I recommended, but as the applicant stated, um, they reached out to us yesterday um, requesting an amendment to condition 3A to basically extend the restricted hours of operations by an hour, and staff has no issues with that and concurs. And um, so for today's motion, um, staff is recommend, uh, recommending an approval with the conditions as amended today. Thank you, and I'm available for questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. DeFrank. Um, we'll start off with uh, Board Member Burgess. Any questions of staff? Yes, uh, to finish the thought about the um the concern that could come up um, with this Class B conditional use approval extending to the use of motorized vehicle fuel sales and service because there's not a there's a subclassification for car wash but I I wasn't clear if this uh, property was receiving approval today and the facility was sold to someone that was interested in opening a fuel st sales and service station um, would this Class B conditional approval uh, be automatically granted to that change of use, or would it have to go back through the Class B approval again? Because it technically would have uh, the use that it's looking for at that point. Because I'm wondering if, if we should, when we get to executive session, discuss adding in the additional restriction for fuel sales as part of this. From staff's perspective, it, it would be our opinion that it would have to come back before the board as it's a change in the application uh, modification to the special use permit to at you know to to revise that nature of the business and what have you um, I mean mr. Thomas can speak to you otherwise but it would be our position that the application that's been presented here is clearly for the car wash facility and that that's if approved that's what would be granted and I agree with that okay thank you no further questions of staff good um, go to board member wood no question. Okay, Vice Chair Cameron. No questions. And Board Member Fields. 
Uh, just a uh, question about lighting on the rear of the car wash to the very east end. Uh, and we talked, uh, there was a mention about the distance from the residential area. Uh, and uh, just concerned that uh, there was some consideration put in place for lighting overspill into the, uh, the neighborhood. Uh, was that addressed? Let that again, John Schmidt, agent for the applicant. As part of the site plan approval and uh, even the building permit, no light spill is uh, allowed over the property line. Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. And this may actually be a question for Mr. Schmidt as well. Um, and it didn't come up, I think, until I saw the video that staff presented, but I noticed uh, in the video that was taken from the rear of the property, there appeared to be a metal swing gate um, that's currently there. And I didn't know if, um, just for security reasons after 9 p.m., if there were any intents to intentions to have a gate or any closure of the uh, either the the driveways or if they would just remain open, you know, 24/7. I couldn't tell from the site plan if. I think that was there. part of the some of the security measures put when it was uh, the the Olive Garden, but mm -hmm. we don't plan any security gates. And it, the the video also kind of caught some of those curbing and and pavement. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. beat up that we that, that we've agreed with the neighbors to get fixed up while we're out there as well. But uh, no, we're not uh, planning on securing it. Okay. Um, yeah, no other questions. Um, so I'll go ahead at this point and uh, open the public hearing. So any members of the public who are present here today and would like to uh, speak on uh, either for or against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, I'll uh, go to staff and see if there are any uh, if there was any uh, communication received, either voicemail, email, et cetera, that needed to be read into the record? None at all. Okay. I will close the public hearing, and we'll move into executive session here. So um, start off uh, with any discussion from Board Member Wood? Nothing further. Okay. Vice Chair Cameron? Nothing. Okay. Board Member Fields? Nothing further. Okay. Uh, yeah, Board Member Burgess? So after hearing testimony and staff's response um, about the condition, I don't feel like it's warranted to have to put impose an additional condition for the fuel use since it's already going to have to come back before us if it changes use. And there's a 180-day provision already as one of the conditions if, if they abandon uh, that particular use for 180 days, it comes back to us anyway. So just uh, make it clear that I won't be asking for any uh, support for additional conditions or anything. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for uh, bringing up that point. I think that's an important, um, that was an important discussion to have an important, uh, you know, item for us to consider because that would be a significant difference from what's in front of us today. And we want to make sure that the appropriate safeguard is in place to prevent that from happening. So, uh, but I agree from, you know, staff and our attorney, it sounds like, um, sounds like those safeguards are in place. So with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I move that the Zoning Board of Appeals granting zoning, grant Zoning Boards of Appeal case number 3409, a re request by John Smith of Smith's Nichols on behalf of 1890 Palm Beach Lakes OPCO LLC for a Class B special use permit to allow for a 4,414 square foot automated car wash facility at 1890 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. This motion is based upon the testimony presented at the hearing along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The board hereby makes finding of fact that each of the applicable criteria in se section 94-36E3 and 4 and sections 94-273D, 46B of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations have been met. In addition, the granting of this Class B special use permit is subject to the conditions of the approval contained in the staff report dated September 1st, 2022. I move that these conditions are necessary to ensure compliance with the proposed and intent of the zoning and land development regulations and consistency with the comprehensive plan of the city of West Palm Beach. And can we clarify that uh, with those conditions you intend uh, with the change in the hours of operations as 
discussed today by both the applicant and staff. Uh, Correct, yeah, so I think um, below that uh, in the packet is, is if modified. imposed and modified and, and we could just refer to, I believe that was condition number two. 3A. 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 Um, we'll, we'll restate the, uh, yep. um, the condition. In addition to granting of this Class B special use permit is subject to the conditions of approval contained in the staff report dated September 1st, 2022, with the further condition that number 3A uh, are modified to read as following. Hours of operation shall be limited to the hours of 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. I move that these conditions as modified are necessary to ensure compliance with the proposed and intent of the zoning and land development regulation and consistency with the comprehensive plan of the city of West Palm Beach. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion was made by board member Fields and seconded by Vice Chair Cameron. I'll ask our board secretary to please call the roll. Christopher Hagan? Yes. Christopher Cameron? Yes. Michael Hyman, please let the record show that Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood? Yes. Alfred Fields? Yes. Um, Jonathan Burgess? Yes. Okay, the motion passes five to zero. Thanks. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck. <clears throat> I will now move into item uh, three, uh, which is Zoning Board of Appeals, case number 3413. I'll ask our board secretary to please read that into the record. A request by John Schmidt of Schmidt Nichols on behalf of Stewart Petrol Holdings LLC for a Class B special use permit to convert an existing car wash into an oil change and quick service business. <clears throat> the subject property consisting of 0.46 acres is located at 1122 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard with Commission District Number 3, Commissioner Christy Fox. Thank you. I uh, will now have the applicant uh, please make their presentation. Uh, good afternoon, city board members. Again, my name is Jordan Sperling, agent for the applicant, and today I'll be presenting the proposed Take 5 facility on Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. The 0.46 acre subject property is located at 1122 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard on the south side of Palm Beach Lakes and east side of Carver Avenue. Uh, the site is currently developed with an existing six bay self service car wash that remains out of service. Uh, the applicant is planning to repurpose the existing car wash with a proposed 2,324 square foot three bay quick oil service building. Uh, the site has existing access to Carver Avenue that was established for the existing self-service car wash as shown in yellow. On the south side of the site, or excuse me, um, on the south side of the site is an existing 15 foot alley. No new access or modification is proposed in this application. The proposed use falls under the motor vehicle fuel sales and service use category, similar to the prior application, uh, which is a permitted use within the neighborhood commercial zoning classification with the issuance of a class B special use permit. While being used for a self-service car wash, this site already received a class B special use permit on in October of 2004, which resulted in the current configuration of the property and a self-service car wash falls into the same use type as the proposed oil change facility that you're seeing today. As previously mentioned, the sites uh, on the south corner of Palm Beach Lakes and the east side of Car Carver Avenue in regard to the surrounding uses uh, to the north across Palm Beach Lakes is the service station UGAS. Uh, to the south is the multifamily residential, uh, which is set back approximately 66 feet from the proposed Use uh, to the east is a single family residential set back approximately 20 feet from the proposed use and to the west across Carver Avenue right away is the multifamily residential Vista Apartments. Uh, this slide just represents a few photos of the existing site conditions starting with the view of the south property line at the top left corner of the screen and a view of the east property line at the bottom right corner. 
Uh, this, slide, this slide just shows some of the additional site photos, starting with a view of the west property line facing east at the top left corner, and a view of the south property line facing north at the bottom right corner. Uh, this slide just shows some of the uh, Take 5 developments located in the surrounding area uh, from our clients' current locations at uh, Southern Boulevard and Parker, Jog Road, and North Lake locations, as you all are probably very familiar with. Uh, here is a colored elevation of the proposed Take 5 facility. If you're facing Palm Beach Lakes looking into the site, you'll see the front elevation at the bottom of the screen and the rear elevation just next to it. Uh, the white box, as you can see on the front and the rear elevation, is the bypass lane, which I'll explain further on the next slide. Um, the project takes cues from the modern development along Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, as you probably have seen from the KFC and the Taco Bell. Uh, but we're adjusting it to have more of a domestic character through the use of materials, textures, and commercial elements. Uh, the building is designed in a contemporary style to conform with the Take 5 corporate logo overall design image. Uh, and the design and earth tone color is generally compatible with other structures that you see every day along the Palm Beach Lakes corridor. Uh, this is the site plan uh, proposed with the Take 5 facility. Uh, we're proposing to preserve the existing five-foot landscape buffer along the perimeter and fill in some of the dead and missing hedge material uh, and provide some sa uh, shade trees. Uh, we have a condition of approval at add a vine on the exterior of the existing buffer wall along the south and east side of the property lines to reduce the impact on some of the surrounding residents. As I mentioned before, we're proposing a bypass lane on the east side of the building, uh, which is solely for vehicles to exit after their oil services have been completed. Uh, there won't be any services provided or any equipment within this bypass lane canopy along the east property line. Uh, this slide just shows some of the project data associated with the facility. As I mentioned, the site is currently developed with an existing uh, six-space self-service car wash. We're planning an adaptive reuse of the current car wash with a uh, professionally operated and managed three-bay quick oil service facility. Um, I, I honestly drive by the site every day um, and I see that the, the site's struggling and it definitely is in need uh, for an adaptive reuse so we can continue to grow uh, the Palm Beach Lakes corridor. Uh, we have city staff uh, recommendation of approval. We're agreeing with the six conditions of approval located on page two of the staff report. Uh, staff found that the proposed use will not adversely affect uh, the surrounding property and it's compatible with the existing uh, and future uses in the area and the Class B permit is in compliance with the city's general use, specific use, and additional use standards. And we have our client and development team here to answer any questions you may have, and we respectfully request your support for approval. Uh, the site's been properly noticed uh, for the property owners within 500 feet of the property. It was advertised in the Palm Beach Post, and there's been no inquiries raising concerns regarding the proposed adaptive reuse. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll ask the board if there are any member or any questions of the applicant. We'll start off with Vice Chair Cameron. Any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, board Member Fields. No questions right here. Okay. Board Member Burgess. And so it appears that the nine parking spaces out front um, that's above and beyond the queuing and stacking uh, waiting spaces. Um, how many of the uh, spaces identified on the site plan are for the queuing? Hard to tell from the uh, sketch. So, um, so as you can see, the, we have um, we have the ten cars as they're um, on the southern property line, which are dedicated for queuing, and then the nine parking spaces along the northern property line. So ten, okay. Yep. And then one for the turnaround. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No Any other questions? questions? Okay. Uh, board member Wood. No questions. Okay. I have no questions. Okay. This time we'll ask staff to come forward and please make a presentation. All right. Good afternoon, board. My name is Alex Folks. I'm a planner with the Development Services Department for the City of West Palm Beach. Um, here presenting ZBA case 3413 for the Take 5 Quick Service and Oil Change located at 1122 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. 
As mentioned by the applicant, the subject property is approximately 0.46 acres and located at the southeast corner of Palm Beach Lakes and Carver Avenue. The area is primarily single and multifamily residential, uh, as well as some commercial uses along Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. Uh, the area is, or the parcel in question is zoned neighborhood commercial. The applicant is proposing to renovate the existing self-service car wash to, into a quick service and oil change facility. Uh, this falls under the motor vehicle fuel sales and service use category, which is permitted in the NC zoning district uh, with the issuance of a class B special use permit. Here you can see the applicant's site plan for the property. The building footprint is not expanding as the applicant intends to utilize and renovate the existing structure. Staff reviewed the site plan at the May 12, 2022 PPRC meeting. The applicant is working to address staff's comments on the site plan, which is separate from this application. The site has also been subject or been in front of the board before on October on October 7th, 2004, they received a, or the site received a Class B special use permit to allow for the self-service car wash facility that currently exists. Right now it stands vacant and the applicant is intending to renovate the existing structure. Um, at this meeting, they received waivers from the zoning land development regulations and those waivers are as follows, where um, the, they received waivers from the minimum setback of the principal structure for many residential properties where code requires a 100-foot setback. They were granted an 81-foot waiver from the rear property line, which is along the east property line, and a 60-foot waiver from, the, from this requirement from the side property line, which is to the south. They also received a waiver from the minimum setback of signs, pumps, pump islands, tanks, vents, and canopies from public right-of-way. Where code requires a 25-foot setback, they were granted a 20-foot waiver. So you can see the monument sign to the northwest of the property is utilizing this waiver and resulted in a five foot setback from the public right of way. Because these waivers are already granted on October 7th, 2004, and the applicant is not proposing any improvements that would deviate from these waivers, it is not necessarily necessary for them to be granted again at this meeting. Here we can see some site photos. This is of the existing facility. Here are some site photos that show the uh, residential properties to the south and the east. Here is a video taken from the front of the lot along Carver Avenue. So given that the site has previously received waivers from the standards that were not met, uh, this, this case complies with all applicable use standards. Therefore, staff is recommending approval with conditions. The conditions of approval can be seen here. Uh, the purpose of these conditions are to ensure the safety, privacy, and well-being of the surrounding residential properties, as well as ensuring compliance with all of the applicable standards. The first three conditions have been brought over from the previous staff report. Uh, as they remain relevant to the proposed use, while the remaining conditions are specific to the proposed use, meaning that they weren't in the previous staff report. So, thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask the board if there are any, member, are any questions of staff. I'll start off with board member Fields. No questions. Okay. Uh, board member Burgess. Uh, do the conditions address the location of the fuel storage uh, within the building in the proximity to the residential property lines? Uh, yes, they do. So they won't be storing fuel on the property. The standards that are currently in the additional use standards are for combustibles, which it's to my knowledge that the uh, motor oil does, uh, does qualify as a combustible, albeit with a very high flash point. So uh, the conditions proposed are to limit the size of those storage facilities and, ma and maintain that they are contained within the building setback lines to ensure the safety of the surrounding residences in the event of an accident or an issue. So they're, so it, uh, it's required to be inside the building? Correct, yeah. Staff is recommending that these um, 
Any receptacles, tanks, or facility for the storage of combustibles shall not exceed a quantity of 200 gallons as per the additional use standards, and that those receptacles, um, tanks, or facilities are maintained within the building setback lines. Okay. And since we had previously approved a waiver from the setback line for the current building envelope and the motor oil is in the building, it could technically sit closer to the property line than otherwise would have been allowed if the, that previous approval um, wasn't in place. Um. For the record, John Ruff, Principal Planner, the previous waiver was with regards to setback from right away. So there was no exceptions granted from adjacent properties. I thought there was a side setback uh, from 100 to 60 or something like that in the. That was just for the principal structure? Right. Yeah, so the principal structure is sitting closer to the property line than it would have been, than would have been originally allowed. And now we're saying we can put fuel inside that building within that setback. Correct. It was granted to. They were previously required a 100 foot separation from residential. And it was previously granted to 81 feet from the side, or excuse me, from the rear and 60 from the side. Right. Those would still be applicable. Right. And so then the tank aspect to it would apply to that as well. So you could still have motor oil 60 feet away from the residential property because we had Right, but the actual, the, the building today is, com closer. is at yeah, the line that was granted yeah. previously. But I just, I wanna bring that up mm -hmm. for executive discussion because I don't know if the proximity of uh, hazardous material closer to the 100 foot reason is any different from the original context of the original approval which was a car wash facility closer to a residential property line so I just wanted to uh, address that question up front before we get into executive session about whether or not there should be any uh, consideration of locating the motor oil further away from the residential side or if just being in the building enough is sufficient well but we can get there when we get to Yeah, no, I was going to say, um, I, I have a follow-up question to that, which is the difference between the, uh, and I don't want to jump out of place here, but th that it's relevant to, to the question because the uh, it, it states um, within the uh, building setbacks, not within the building. It doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to necessarily state that the material or that the hazardous substances will be stored within the building. It just says within the building setback lines. Right, but kind of by default, because the waiver was granted and the building actually sits at that prop, at that waiver line, they couldn't go any closer than what the building already is, unless they were to request an additional waiver from that. So by default, it can't go any further south than what the existing building is. But it may be stored out, outdoors, not in the building. Right, but the edge of the building sits at that, at that line, so I don't know if it would be possible, but... Technically, yes. Yeah, and I, and I didn't want to hijack the... the yep, that, that answers my question. Okay. Uh, Board Member Wood? Uh, no further questions. Okay. And Vice Chair Cameron? No further questions. Yeah, and I, I guess I'd, I did have a follow-up question to, to uh, because I think the, for example, looking at the rear setback, the, the building isn't a perfect rectangle. It's irregularly shaped, so it's possible that it could be stored outdoors you know, within the, that rear setback at a part of the building that doesn't go all the way back to the minimum, you know, setback that was, was granted, if that makes sense. I just wanted to clarify that because I, it isn't promised or stated here that, the, that those materials would be stated, it would be stored indoors. They could be, um, it could be stored outside. And I don't know if the applicant, it looks like the applicant may, may want to clarify that further. John Schmidt, agent for the applicant, we'd be all right to revise that condition to uh, require them within uh, the buildings, within okay. inside the building. Yeah. Um, I have no other questions of, of staff. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, anybody who wishes to come forward and speak uh, related to this case, please come forward. Okay, and I'll ask staff if there were any uh, other communications, voicemails, emails, et cetera, that need to be entered into the record? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, and at that point, I'll close the public hearing. Um, I'll go ahead now and we'll move into executive session. Uh, so let me start uh, with board member Burgess. Um, 
I mean, I, I would support revising the condition to specifically indicate that we intend to keep the motor oil indoors to prevent future, especially given the proximity to existing residential. So by granting that uh, waiver, you know, it, it pushes it closer theoretically to the neighbors, and I just want to be sensitive to that. So I'd, I'd suggest that we consider that additional revision to the condition. Okay, so yeah, item, uh, I think it's condition six, state, you know, currently states all receptacles, tanks, or facilities for storage of combustibles in 200 gallon or less amounts shall be located and maintained within building setback lines. Um, and then, so that would be modified to just say within the building envelope, potentially. Which then confirms that it is within the building setback lines as well, but. Or within the building, or as within the building, building footprint, or as otherwise prescribed by local environmental regulations too. So I think if there's something that restricts it from being indoors that we're not thinking about, I mean mm -hmm. the major issue is just protecting the neighboring properties from spill. So, in my mind. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's a. It sounds like the applicant is in is in support of that as well too. Um, any other discussion, uh, Board Member Wood? No, nothing. Okay, no. Vice Chair Kamer. Just, just to clarify what the modification is going to be then. Is it just simply, as to number six, that it'll be just limited to maintain within the building, period? Or is there something more that goes with that? Yeah, within the building, and I think uh, Member uh, Burgess was suggesting also, uh, and I don't know if this needs to be stated explicitly or if it's implied that it, you know, as long as it, you know, complies with the applicable environmental standards and um, may suggest that uh, Board Member Burgess make the motion <laughs> if, it, if you want uh, you know, to further clarify that language. But again, I'm not sure and the Board Attorney may, you know, may also have an opinion as to whether or not it's necessary for us to include that or, you know, it's, that's a given for them to operate that they have to comply with environmental you could recite that it's located within the building as permitted by law. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Any other discussion, Vice Chair? No, that's it. Thanks. Okay. And Board Member Fields, any executive uh, discussion? No discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, then I think at that point, uh, we'll entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to uh, grant the Class B special use permit. Um, I move that the Zoning Board of Appeals grant Zoning Board appeal, uh, of Appeal case number 3413, a request by John Schmidt of Schmidt Nichols on behalf of Stewart Petrol Holdings LLC for a Class B special use permit to convert an existing car wash into an oil change and quick service business. This motion is based on the testimony presented at the hearing along with the application submitted in the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The board hereby makes findings of fact that each of the applicable criteria in sections 94-36E3 and 4 and sections 94-273D46B of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations have been met. In addition, the granting of this Class B special use permit is subject to the condition of the conditions of approval contained in the staff report dated September 1st, 2022, with the further condition that condition number six right, is modified uh, to read as followed. All receptacles, tanks, or facilities for the storage of combustibles in 200 gallon or less amount shall be located and maintained within building envelope and all setback lines as permitted by law. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion has been made by uh, <coughs> Member Burgess and seconded by Vice Chair Kammerer. I'll ask our Board Secretary to please call the roll. Christopher Hagen? Yes. Christopher Kemmerer? Yes. Michael Hyman, please let the record show that uh, Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood? Yes. Alfred Fields? Yes. Jonathan Burgess? Yes. Okay. 
uh, the application is approved 5 0. Okay. Yep, congratulations and best of luck. At this point, uh, we'll move on to our next case, which is Zoning Board of Appeals case number 3416. Um, I'll uh, yeah, turn it over to uh, Board Member Burgess real briefly. Yes, I already submitted my disclosure, but due to ongoing business relationship with uh, uh, Mr. Rowe, I'll be recusing myself from the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll now have our Board Secretary uh, please read this item into the record. A request by Larry Rowe on behalf of Christopher Warford for a Class B special use permit for construction of a swimming pool within the required front setback. The subject property consisting of 0.471 acres is located at 7417 South Flagler Drive within Commission District Number 5, Commissioner Christina Lambert. Thank you. And as noted by Board Member Burgess, he is recusing himself uh, from this item. Uh, that leaves us with four board members up here. So just as a um, clarification for uh, those in attendance, that does require, with only four members present, that does require a unanimous vote. At this point, uh, we'll ask the applicant uh, to please come forward, introduce yourself, and make your presentation. Hello, my name's Larry Rowe. And... Uh, I'm with LB Row Pools. Um, we're looking to get a, a pool moved in this front yard. Is this, is this on? Did you submit a PowerPoint? I think it was just pictures. I don't know if she got it. Can I just click on that picture? That's not your application. Oh. <laughs> Probably not then. Did you get it? <laughs> you can use uh, you can use ours if you need yeah, to. Just do the pictures. Do you, have, do you have your location map? Which one's yours? So this house has a pool in the front yard, really small, really old, um, in disrepair. It's not, and it's really, really close to the front door right now. Um, they're doing some modifications to the front of the house. So we're hopefully requesting to, to move the pool 10 feet further towards the flagler. Um, and the pictures that she'll show you, um, all the landscape staying the same, six to 10 foot high landscape. Everything will look the same from the front yard. All we're doing is just gonna put in a new pool in place of the old one. Okay, yep. um, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, ask the board members if they have any questions for the applicant. I'll first start with board member Wood. Uh, no questions. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Cameron. Yeah, if you, if you could just state specifically the reason to move the pool. Uh, right right now, the... you'll see from her aerial picture, or you can see it's right on the house. Um, right now, the way you gotta go in, you basically if you walked out the door, they had to put a railing so you wouldn't go right into the pool. And the pool's like three foot down. So obviously gonna raise it up with the elevation and they're putting a new entrance on the front of the house. Um, so we're just gonna move the pool a few more feet away. And like I said, it's in really bad, it's old, um, it's cracked. Um, we're gonna put it in, time we renovated it and all, we'd, it'd be just putting a Band-Aid on cancer basically. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and board member Fields? And basically, you're stating that uh, visually from outside of the property, everything will still look the same. Correct. Yeah, it, it's beautiful right now. It's got mature landscape. It'll stay the same. Okay. Thank you. And it's also right across from Suma Beach there. That's one of the main reasons they got it blocked off so they can have a little privacy. Okay. Um, yeah, just in terms of the... in. I don't know if I was able to completely tell, especially because the existing pool was kind of irregularly shaped and this looked like more of a rectangular. So, so only one corner is gonna really be encroaching. Like the side and um, the other front part is not, it's just the way the road's at an angle right there, the one corner is gonna be encroaching. And, and in terms of, I can understand the need or desire to move it a little further from the structure to give a little bit of you know that space. Um, I'm just trying to uh, indicate um, or 
understand dimensionally, does the width of the pool change significantly from the existing you know, pool that's there? No, and, and um, like we have plenty of room to do length if we took out the driveway and then we have another issue, you know? So um, we're about the max that we think we can get um, without changing too many things. We did a similar one right down the street and it was granted to uh, 10 feet and uh, we're just, they're friends and obviously they want to, and they're renovating their house. So they want to try to make this, you know, work. Like if you were to see it, you'd say, wow, that's crazy how close it is to the house. And not to mention, right there, the water table is really, really bad. Just the mere construction of it, um, right up next to the property would be another uh, construction nightmare. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, I believe in the packet it showed um, almost like there's a railing from the door to prevent you from kind of stepping <laughs> into terrible. the It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Uh, and, and again, I, I think from the question regarding the width, I was just trying to confirm, you know, it's not like, you know, if, if you're, if you were to, if it were possible to pick up the existing pool and just drop it, you know, a few feet further east, that's one thing. But if you dropped it a few feet further east and then also tried to widen it to push it further into that setback, um, that that to me is a little bit, you know, a little bit different. And 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 the widest part of the pool again, I just was looking for some confirmation or, or if you could kind of confirm that it. It, you're not really widening the pool from the current no it's situation. really close and the other problem is that it's a concrete pool mm -hmm. which is just i don't know how they built built this thing back when they did but it's not good um so yeah similar width um the length's a little longer but we have plenty of room on the on the length i believe anyway without going i think we have a 10 foot on the side and um, that's where we're starting so that way we can leave our driveway just where it is hopefully. understood Okay, I have no other questions to the applicant. Thank so, you guys. Uh, thank you, we'll uh, go ahead and have staff come up then and make a presentation. Hi, Alexis Singlier for the board. Um, as Larry just said, the address is 7417 South Flagler and they're requesting class B for their pool. Um, not meeting the front setback, the property is on a corner lot South of Flagler and Suma Street. They are asking a waiver for the front setback. They're proposing it to be 11.3 feet. They're waiving a total of 13.7 feet. They'll meet all other setbacks. They'll combine with the side, the rear, and the corner. Their justification, as Larry said, was it being super close to the front of the house, they're worried about a safety concern and also the pool being in disrepair. So they're asking to move it a little forward so it's not as close to the front entryway and they're able to fix up and redesign their pool. These are pictures of the site. As you see, the bushes are super high. There won't be any vision from the street of the pool. It'll stay shaded in like it was and protected. This is a proposed picture of the pool. As you see, it will meet the side corner. It's moving it up forward to the front of the setback so it's not as close to the front entryway. And they're asking for the 11.3 front setback again. And then this is just an overlay of the existing pool compared to the new pool. As you can see, the existing pool is right next to that front entryway. And then the findings, it complies with the general standards, the specific um, residential and the standards, and we are recommending approval with conditions. And those conditions would be, they would still need to apply to the landscape requirement. And then the video of As you can see in the video, there's, if you're walking the sidewalk or you're going through, the pool is protected and fenced in by the high hedges. All around the property.
and staff looked at other options for this proposed pool and because of the size of the lot in the house and where the driveways are, the most reasonable spot for it would be in that location for the safety and just how the lot is structured right now. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'll uh, first go to, um, I don't remember where I left off, but I'll start with Vice Chair Kammer. Any questions of staff? No. Okay, uh, Board Member Fields? No questions. Okay, and Board Member Wood? No questions. Um, I just wanted to clarify, um, in this case, I know um, we always run into this on corner lots. Uh, so in this case, the front uh, of the lot is being defined as the side along Flagler Drive. Yep, is that Flagler correct? is the front. Okay, and then the side is, is defined as, as along Suma? Yep, correct. Okay. And so the only uh, variance here being sought is from that front yep, that setback. They're, they're, they comply to the corner setback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, no other questions of staff. Uh, so I'll go ahead at this point and open the public hearing. Um, anyone who wishes to speak uh, regarding this case, please come forward to the podium. State your name and address, and there's uh, three minutes uh, for each speaker, so uh, we'll have the time put on the clock, please. Mr. Chairman, the timer is still is the issue, so I will utilize the clock that's at the front door. Um, can, hello, my name's Douglas Root. I live at 108 Suma Street, which is directly across from this house. Um, before I make my comments, since I only have three minutes, there's been a, it's an issue of timing of this meeting because nobody's here in the summer, and I don't know if they did this on purpose. Uh, but just me and one other resident could make it here. Uh, the house to the to the uh, the north is a seasonal rental. The house to the uh, west is um, uh, Snowbirds. The the, the ne house next to them is a seasonal rental. Uh, the two houses across from them nobody lives in uh, yet. They were just finished construction, and there's another vacant lot to the east of me. So there's nobody around at this time. Plus, this meeting is called at 1.30 on a Wednesday. I did meet other people that wanted to come here, but they have to work. So the whole timing of this meeting uh, is just you know, not, not appropriate. Anyway, um, to start off, um, I built my house many years ago and applied for the same exception. Uh, I only have a f 60 feet by 74 feet for a building footprint. And so I went uh, to the board and asked them if I could put my pool in the front setback. And they denied me. And I said, why? Because they said, I need a, a, um, a hardship. And they said, what's your hardship? I said, well, I have a small lot. And they said, no, that's not a hardship. And they said there's a specific setback of 25 feet uh, for the pool, and I was denied. Okay. The other thing is this submission has a lot of false information, um, including if you look at the background information, um, it says the house is orientated such that the front door and driveway face Churchill Road. Churchill Road is like a mile away, so I'm not sure what that means. Then it goes on to say that the side of the lot as defined by West Palm Beach standards and practices. That, that has no meaning at all. Um, I, I, I wanna point out that this, this request is not for a foot, like you're giving somebody one foot um, relief or 18 inches relief. They want virtually 14 feet to encroach into the required front setback. Uh, 70 percent or 60 or 70 percent is what I calculated would be located in that front setback, not a quarter, which was stated by the applicant. Also in the justification statement, it says the existing pool is cur currently in the front yard and is in disrepair. Well, I was there and saw the pool and As you're speaking, uh, you need to be in the microphone so we can, can keep it on the record. But, but we can pass, yeah, you can hand those to be passed along, passed around.
also states that it's close to the front door. It is not at all close to the front door. Front door is about 30 feet away. Um, I also want to show you that they also state that this is the best location and they can't do anything else but put it there. This. And, and I realize we're having difficulty with the timer, but um, we're, the time is wrapping up, so I do need you to, to, to just try to conclude. Okay. And you have to be, be on the microphone. Yeah. Uh, disrepair. Um, okay. Uh, also, uh, it says that recognizing the improvement in value to property, immediate neighbors support the installation of the pool. I'd like to know who that is because I can't find anybody. We do have two letters from people that I'd like to read. Um, I'm surprised hey. the city did not read those letters because they are not in support of this project and I'd like to read them now. Uh, and your, your, time's, your time's up, but, I, but if you can enter those into the record, we can have them read into the record. When do I do that? So do we, it, I'll ask staff if they're in receipt of the, the letters. Uh, if the gentleman can speak to who those letters from were from, we do have two emails that were received as early as yesterday and today that we were going to include in the record upon conclusion of uh, in-person comments. Uh, if they are the same ones, then then we have nothing additional. Can, yeah, sir, can you state who the letters are, are from? Sure. One is Mary Britton Chatham, and the other one is from Britton Bardis. Yes, those are the two that we have here, and we're going to provide to you upon conclusion of in-person comments, and I can hand those out now. Thanks. Well, we'll go ahead, yeah, with the, with the folks that are here in the chambers, and then as as staff mentioned, those will be uh, also read into the record. Okay, so I uh, just want to conclude, if that's okay, do my summary. Please, yeah, please quickly, because uh, so your time the, is. So the issues is, uh, are there's no hardship. There's absolutely no hardship. And the problem is if they get approval for this, that gives them an unfair advantage of building a bigger house on their property because they're moving the pool out of their building's uh, footprint. So that gives them an, a, a different... Uh, zoning, which changes open space in the zoning code, it changes uh, green space, it, it uh, changes the setback requirement, and it changes the density uh, and the massing of the house relative to the size of the lot. It, so, okay, and I, I'm sorry, but your time is up. But thank you very much for the uh, the comments today, and I think we'll take those all under advisement. All right. So there's no hardship and uh, no reason. Granting is this is there anyone else here in attendance who uh, wishes to speak? Please come forward to the. the question to ask. Um, uh, good afternoon. So, uh, my name is Peter Applefield. I live at 122 Seville Road, a little south of the property. Um, I love this city. I lived in the neighborhood 25 years. I love the neighborhood. And yes, we've seen our values skyrocket and, and the city gets credit for that. Um, I've also done a little commercial real estate over the years in the city. I've worked with Mr. Roach and others. I've been treated great. Um, you could do it, I could do an ad for the city. I would do it. The downtown's fantastic. My office is at Como, the Como building, so Nope, I'm not sure anybody likes this city more than I do. They, they make fun of me for, for that. Um, I have similar views as, as Mr. Root. I, I feel like um, our neighborhood's booming. That's great. Our neighborhood's going through some issues that I don't have time to talk about. Um, but real quick, the, the, I'll, I'll stick to the subject. I'd, I would have liked to have seen a hardship. I feel like there's a, there's a precedent and then there's not a precedent. I mean, I, you can say there's no precedent, 
But I, I'm not sure the neighborhood's going to be served by a bunch of pools at the 10 foot, at the 10 foot line or the 11 foot line. And I'm a reasonable person that says, hey, you need a few feet. I'm even three feet, four feet, and there's a real hardship. I, I'm not sure there's a real hardship. I think this is about developing the property to the max, maximizing the value. These houses that were worth a couple million are now worth 10 million. My house that was worth X is now worth 4X. And I think this is a developer play to maximize value. And I don't think the neighborhood's served by 10 foot setback from the front line. And I'm, I'm with, I don't see a set, I don't see a hardship. I, I'm not sure there's somewhere else to put the pool. Um, I, I don't, I'm very skeptical of the safety issue. And I'm quite skeptical of how bad repair the pool is in. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm skeptical whether the owner is really being forthright in the reasons. I think it's just about value and development and I'm not sure that's how we should approach the neighborhood. That's it. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Is, is there anyone else here from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Uh, well, th just a second, there is an opportunity for uh, you know, for rebuttal or responses to some of these. Uh, at this point, um, as staff indicated, we did receive two emails, so I'll uh, go ahead and read those into the record. Um, the first was from uh, Mary Britton Cheatham um, and states the following. Uh, this letter is intended for the planning division of the city of West Palm Beach. My name is Mary Britton Cheatham and I am the owner of 7405 South Flagler Drive. I've just reviewed an application justification for the Zoning Board of Appeals regarding a swimming pool at 7417 South, uh, South Flagler Drive. I'm the neighbor directly to the north of this property. I'm unable to attend this meeting, but I wanted to write a letter because I was, not only was I confused by the information provided, which seems sloppily compi compiled, i.e. Churchill Road is almost 10 blocks away, but also I've never given any support for these changes to code. However, in a letter attached to the application states that recognizing the improvement in value to the property, immediate neighbors of the reference property support the installation of said swimming pool. I've never met the owner of 7417 South Flagler, nor have I been given the opportunity to review plans or support any changes to code. The fact that this document suggests that I'm in favor of this change is concerning to me. It seems possible that approving what appears to be a minor change to code could pave the way for more substantial uh, allowances for construction in the future. Thank you for your, con your consideration, Mary Britton Cheatham. And then uh, the second item that was received uh, was from Britton Bardis. Um, it says, I, as a close neighbor to 7417 South Flagler, am writing you in opposition to the owner's request for a variance to move the, his pool. I'm not an abutting neighbor, but one house removed at 115 Sumer Road. I'm a preservationist and deeply concerned about all the new homes that have been built in this charming neighborhood in the last 18 months. It's very sad to see the changes that are occurring. My opposition comes from the fear that changes in code and variances will destroy the historic charm of this beautiful neighborhood. I hope you consider these comments and what these major changes mean for the future of our neighborhood. Sincerely, Britton Damgard. And then I'll ask staff if there were any other voicemails or anything else uh, received. Okay. Um, so at this point, um, I'll go ahead and close uh, the public hearing for additional public input. Um, I think there, you know, first of all, just in response, I know that there is a, a comment raised about uh, the fact that um, some people may be out of town at this point. This board does accept not just in in person uh, communication, but as you saw in the emails, uh, that that we do uh, receive either voicemails or 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 the emails that we received here. So there are multiple opportunities for people to to weigh in on this, and and so I think you know that anyone else who um, was unable because of a work commitment or or being a seasonal resident uh, did and does have the opportunity to uh, to provide communication in in this format. So there is a uh, as far as process goes and a, you know, an opportunity for people to be heard, there, is, there are multiple ways and avenues for that to occur. And we did, uh, again, receive some via email. So you know, th these proceedings are always the first Thursday of the month at 1.30 p.m. We accept communication in, in multiple ways to accommodate uh, you know, the, uh, the input in, in every way possible. Um, we do, uh, as, as there were comments that were stated, I'll just ask the applicant to, to come up and respond to any other you know, questions or, or uh, comments that, that were raised 
um, thank, thank related you. to the application. Again, Larry Rowe. Um, he said that this is about money and the guy wants to resell it all. This guy's been there since 04 and he's not selling the house. He's here for a long term. So, and there's been five, there's been five. No, it, it, he has the floor. He has the floor at this point. There's been five more granted to 10 feet along Flagler. Um, none of them look any different from the street. Um, they're not changing the footprint of the house or changing the entry doors on that side. Um, and making it so that you don't fall in the pool right away. But as far as reselling this thing, he's not doing this as a long term for him and his family. Understood. He's been there since 04. So if he'd have sold it, he'd have sold it in the last year. Un understood. At, at, I appreciate at this it. point, it, I, that was really, I think, just to kind of clarify information. Uh, you know, we're not, you, we, I get we, it. yeah, the public comment at this point is closed. We'll consider everything that's been, that's been heard as we go into executive session. Thank you. So thanks. We're, no, we're, we're in executive session at this point. So we've, I think we've heard the, uh, the, the items, you know, the, the, the opinions that have been stated and, and the, the issues that have been brought up. So I'm, I'm going to turn it now to our board for executive session. I'll start off with uh, board member Fields if you have uh, comments for discussion. No discussion at this point. Okay. Um, board member Wood. Um, can we ask staff if they can comment on the irregularities in the uh, statement and the that was uh, given to us by, um, during the public hearing about the location and the adjacent properties and so forth that are all, that seem to be in question? Can you clarify if there was a spe specific well, the concern one or one item one that comment I can that was made was that I can't remember the street. There was one; it's a mile away, and it apparently, in the yeah, I looked through the staff report. Unless he received a draft of the staff report, I didn't see where that was the case within there. I did a quick search, and I didn't see um, unless there was a, a a paragraph where you know a previous staff report hadn't been updated appropriately. Um, but it does sit on a corner property of Flagler Drive, um, and then the the adjacent side street. Right. It, it, yeah, I believe I, I saw it in the applicant's justification statement. It appears to be probably a cut okay. and paste, yeah. uh, a cut and paste issue. So it, it the applicant's justification uh, is referencing Churchill Road instead of Flagler Drive. Um, so I, you know, that's that's the item that was was pointed out. I see. Okay. Uh, I do want to clarify, if I may. I know you guys are. Yeah. There was a question or concern about changing the setbacks for the building. Right. Um, and I specifically want to address that, that the application before you is specific to the pool setbacks um, and that those are required, you know, with Flagler being defined as the front, the front setback for pools is 25 feet. That doesn't, anything that happens here today does not impact building setbacks for future construction, the existing building, anything like that. They, any new construction or addition to the existing building would have to comply with the building setbacks as they are in the code. And today's motion, today's action would not impact that. It, sir, uh, only the people that are up at the, uh, the microphone have the, have the floor. And I, I did, so that was a question I wanted to follow up with staff on, which is that, that the item before us is related to the pool setback, um, which is, uh, which is what uh, the decision that's been made today. Um, it does not change the building setbacks that would be required should this, if this <laughs> were to be torn down and if the building were to be torn down, a replacement building would have to comply with the building setbacks that it has to comply with today, unless they came forward here and asked for a waiver from the building setbacks as a separate future request. Correct, the building setbacks are even a completely different section of the code than what you're even considering today. Understood. Okay. Like sir, I, I, I'm sorry the public comments closed. I think we, we did hear the concerns that were raised and, uh, and this board does take all the input and the concerns you know, carefully, but I, and there's, this is not a back and forth. We're in the executive session at this point. Mr. Okay. Chair, I think uh, it's important to note now that what's before you is whether or not you grant the uh, Class B special use permit and to grant that, there are the standards, along with the standards for the waiver, which has been presented to you. 
if the applicant and the evidence presented meets those standards, then the applicant is entitled to the grant. If it doesn't, of course, you would deny it. But before you is the application for the Class B uh, in order to grant the waiver. Yeah, and, and as far as the proceedings go, as, as it was before, it's deciding on the waiver, and then should there be yes, a sir. positive, and then uh, it, should that move forward, then, then the uh, Class B special use permit would be considered by the board. That's correct. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, yeah, That's board all member I have. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, Vice Chair Cameron? Yes, I have a couple of questions for Mr. Roach, if I could, just relative to the issues that have been raised. Thank you. So, <clears throat> at first it seemed like an innocuous case that we normally get where somebody asked to reposition the pool. It seemed just a one-off, and the, the main issue seemed to be the proximity to the, the house, and I accept that's the way it is. But the concerns that I hear from the, the neighborhood, which I ask that you can help us address to understand, is, as I understand it, there's complaint that um, I'm sorry, sir. What was your first name? Your, your name? Douglas Ruth. That he was treated differently in the past. That's one issue, and, and requesting a setback. But I'd, the fundamental question I like it is really too is like, what is the overall purpose of a front setback of 25 feet to start to address the issue that was raised by the in the public comment? I mean, the purpose of any setback, whether it be a building you know, an accessory, you know, a main house, an accessory structure or anything like that would would be to make sure that you're protecting um, encroachment and separation from either adjacent properties or the rights of way or, or things like that, making sure that uh, there is that separation to, to minimize the impact of that structure or that element on that property uh, from those adjacent properties or rights of way. Um, as obviously as part of this, as you can see with the existing house, which, you know, complies and any new construction would have to comply with setbacks, pools are treated independently of that. Um, oftentimes, as you've seen before, we look at what are the options on the property with regards to the construction of a pool, um, what are the locations that are available and, and compliance with the code and so forth. Um, in this one, because of its existing location, the existing location of the house, the existing location of the driveway, and you know the proximity of the existing pool to the house and need to, to rebuild it, uh, we felt like the application complied with the standards that the impact that would be generated, the additional impact that would be generated by that close proxi closer proximity to the right of way was mitigated based upon the existing conditions of the hedges and the enclosure of that, that space, and therefore we incorporated that into our condition and that they would have to do that. Um, it would be a different story if that, if that area was completely open and exposed to, to the adjacent right of way. So I see that. Um, I don't see there's a neighbor, it's a road. Mm -hmm. there. The, the other concern that I heard from the, the people who made comments during the, the public comment was that the concern that if this is allowed, there are then going to be a whole bunch of properties in the neighborhood that have pools within 10 to 11 feet of the, the front back setback. This is some type of precedential move that will allow everybody in the neighborhood to do this. No, every, every application, as you're familiar with, is reviewed and provided a recommendation based upon the merits of that application. There's actually standards in our code with variances, for example, that you can't utilize an existing nonconformity or another variance as, as justification for your, your request or for granting the, the approval if that, if that were the case. Um, so each one is reviewed on its own merits. Uh, you've seen them before you before. Um, and you know we evaluate each of those criteria for that specific application. So granting one here does not guarantee that they would happen, you know, the adjacent property or the you know two properties to the north or, or further north on Flagler. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, looking at this application, you know, I think obviously if, if this lot were, um, if there were no house on the lot today and um, we were coming in, you know, with a, if there were a request made to, to do that, you, you know, that's a, a condition where you know that's 
that's more of a you know self-imposed of what you you know would typically be called a self-imposed hardship. In this case, I think you know looking at the um, the existing railing and steps and condition that are in place to prevent somebody from when walking out that existing door directly pretty much into the pool um, shows you know I think a, it you know, certainly outlines an issue with with the location of of the where the the pool is today in terms of you know sort of accessibility and and being able to uh, you know and the functionality of that area uh, one of the exhibits that was passed around was one that highlighted a um, you know the the areas that were within the 25 foot setback but all of them if you try to place a pool within that has the pool basically right up against the building so that you know is the the reason for the request um, you know I know staff spent a good bit of time as they do always with all applications um, thoroughly reviewing this in comparison to the standards um, in this case there are a couple of conditions that that were in place you know I think to um, help mitigate any of the um, any of the negative impacts that could be raised and I think a couple of board members have, have brought those up in the executive session which is I think the primary uh, negative impact is is just the visual one and and we have a staff condition that speaks to that which is maintaining the uh, the hedges and the, the screening um, you know for that that pool area um, as staff has stated this does not com confer any other um, uh, ability of the applicant to uh, to expand the building setbacks or build a, a larger house or anything along those lines uh, that that doesn't that is that is a completely separate and apart from this application really what's before us today is is looking at if if this pool if the existing pool were to be removed and uh, a replacement pool is to be built a little bit further away from the house giving it a little bit more separation whether or not we're willing to approve that with the fact that it does uh, that 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 new location does uh, does go into the front yard setback so again I think we have to we heard a lot today we have to you know limit our um, deliberations and our um, uh, you know our rendering of fact on this on what is before us today not speculation on, on oh, whether a house could be torn down and a bigger house built etc cetera, etc cetera. That's not before us today, and and again, that that's what we as a board need to focus on, which is simply the the matter that's sitting in front of us. So, I think we've you know we've we have heard the concerns of the the public. I understand, um, you know, that the the, uh, the concern of neighbors, but as noted again, this doesn't also this also does not um, uh, create uh, you know set a, uh, a, a now a blanket approval for for others to do that in this case we have an existing building location on the site that is is driving the the reasoning for the matter that's in front of us today so with that um, at this point if there's any other discussion from the board uh, we can have that otherwise I'll entertain a motion sir I'm sorry the public hearings closed you did have more than the three minutes that's that's allowed of time and we should not even be in this back and forth right now because we're in executive session. So I'm going to turn I'm going to turn to the board uh, for a motion at this point, please. I move that the zoning board of appeals grant the waiver for zoning boards of appeals case number three four one six as listed in the staff report dated September first. 2022 the motion is based upon the testimony presented at the hearing along with the application submitted and staff report which constitute competent substantial evidence the board hereby makes finding a fact that all of the applicable criteria in section 94-273 a2 of the city of West Palm Beach zoning and land development regulations have been met the motion has been made by board member fields is there a second second okay it's been moved by board member fields and seconded by vice chair camera i'll ask the board secretary to please call the roll christopher hagan yes christopher camera yes michael hyman please let the record show michael hyman is absent michael wood yes alfred fields yes 
Okay. Uh, the waiver has been approved four to zero. Uh, now in front of us is the Class B special use permit. Is there a motion on that? I move that the Zoning Board of Appeals grant Zoning Board of Appeals case number 3416, a request by LB Road, Inc., on behalf of Christopher Wolford for a Class B special use permit to construct an accessory swimming pool within the required front yard setback of the property located at 7417 South Flagler Drive. This motion is based upon the testimony presented at the hearing along with the application submitted to the and the staff report, which constitute cons competent substantial evidence. The board hereby makes finding of fact that each of the applicable criteria in section 94-36E3 through 5 and section 94-304E2 of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations have been met. In addition, the granting of Class B special use permit is subject to the conditions of the approval contained in the staff report dated September 1st, 2022. I move that these conditions are necessary to ensure compliance with the proposed and intent of the Zoning and Land Development Regulations and consistent with the comprehensive plan of the city of West Palm Beach. Motion has been made by board member Fields. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion has been made by board member Fields, seconded by vice chair Kammerer. I'll ask the board secretary to please call the roll. Christopher Hagan. Yes. Christopher Kammerer. Yes. Michael Hyman, please let the record show that Michael Hyman is absent. Michael Wood. Yes. Alfred Fields. Yes. Okay, the class B special use permit has been approved. I'll go now to the uh, next item on the agenda, which is uh, there are no administrative appeals. Um, there's uh, then unfinished business, of which there's none. Uh, new business, none, and then uh, other business. That's the nomination elected election of officers for the next year. Sir, 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 you're out of order. We're on. We're on to the next item on the agenda. Sir. Sir, we're out of order. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roach, uh, we're on to other business. Yeah, so as in accordance with the bylaws, uh, September of every year, the ZBA is to nominate and elect their officers for the following uh, calendar, uh, I guess it would be fiscal year more, <laughs> in a way. Um, so from October until the following September. Um, so I believe Mr. Hagan has served a couple years and as a, has Mr. Cameron, but uh, it's at the will of the board to, to nominate and elect their officers. Those officers are chair and vice chair. That is correct, yes. Thank you. The floor is open for nominations at this time. Yeah, I'll nominate, uh, I'll nominate Christopher Hagen as chairperson and Mr. Christopher Kramer oh, as time, vice chairman. Yeah. One at a time. One at a time, all right. <laughs> Christopher Hagen as chairperson. I move nominations be closed on the said name. Second. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't hear. So um, you know, retreating this as, as normal motions. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think it was was moved by board member Wood, and then we could treat either Mr. Fields or Mr. Cameras as a second to that uh, to that motion. Um, so, um, Mr. Fields moved to close the nominations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then we'll open it to a vote. So all of those in favor of Mr. Hagen being chair. Please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No? Okay. okay. And then, so that will leave a nomination and vote for vice chairperson. I'd like to nominate Christopher Kammerer as vice chairman. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess brought the lights down. <laughs> Got the job. <laughs> we didn't do that quite fast enough. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so a nomination from Mr. Fields for Mr. Cameron as vice chairperson. I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Wood. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Hagen, Mr. Cameron. Thank yeah, thank you very much. I'm um, happy to serve in this role again and appreciate, uh, appreciate all of you as well, too, on the board. It's a uh, pleasure working alongside each and every one of you. And just to give you an update, most importantly, thank you all for, for your service to the ZBA and, you know, your diligence and each month, um, oftentimes exciting. So, um, but your cooperation in, in attending the meetings and, and establishing the quorum is much appreciated. We know during the summer months, it's a little bit harder with vacations and things like that. Um, we are in the process of continuing to try and fill the second alternate position. Um, it's my understanding that there is a potential candidate, so they're going through that process uh, right now uh, to be reviewed and then nominated by the mayor, so hopefully that pans out. Um, I'll continue to keep you updated on that. Obviously, that will help with establishing the quorum as well as those circumstances where we only have four members who are voting and a unanimous approval is, or a unanimous vote is necessary to approve the motion. So. Uh, we understand that presents some challenges, so we're going to continue to work to fill that. And uh, but we appreciate your cooperation throughout the throughout the year. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, with that, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, move and uh, see if there's a motion to adjourn the meeting. Move that we adjourn the uh, the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is there a second. Second. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.